Questions asking whether two molecules are enantiomers, diastereomers, or identical are some of the most high yield and high trouble types on tests. You've probably already dealt with a lot of these in your practice tests and are always surprised when you get them wrong. Well, after watching this video in which I'll show you a trick to make these super quick and easy and help you not fall into traps, you'll always be surprised that you keep getting them correct. But first, a brief review about enantiomers and diastereomers, the stereoisomers, in comparison to identical molecules. Enantiomers are chiral and can have one or more chiral carbons, which are also referred to as stereocenters. Diastereomers are also chiral and must have at least two chiral carbons. And identical molecules may or may not be chiral and are just same molecules, meaning not stereoisomers of each other. Enantiomers are molecules with same molecular formula and connectivity that are non-superimposable mirror images of each other when the molecules are facing each other, meaning the substituents around the stereocenters are oriented in opposite directions, which means they have opposite absolute configuration at their stereocenters. So if one is R configuration, the other is S configuration, or vice versa. Diastereomers are molecules also with same molecular formula and connectivity that are also non-superimposable, however, non-mirror images of each other, meaning they have varying orientations of substituents around one or more of their stereocenters when facing each other, which means their absolute configurations are not same nor opposite, just different from each other. So if one molecule has RS configuration, the other might be SS or RR and SR, and so on, with a few varying configurations. And identical molecules also have same molecular formula and connectivity, and unlike enantiomers and diastereomers, have same orientation around their stereocenters, and thus same absolute configurations, meaning they're exactly the same in all ways and not mere images of each other, and we know they're identical molecules because they're superimposable on each other. Now let's get into actual examples with molecules with same molecular formula and connectivity to demonstrate the trick, and then after we'll go through the traps to look out for. Here's our first two molecules. Right off the bat, we can see that they're not diastereomers because they each only have one chiral carbon, and diastereomers must have at least two. And while the molecules are oriented the same with the bromines pointing in the same direction, we could see that they're not identical either because the bromine on the left side is wedged and on the right side it's dashed. So they're enantiomers, which is the correct answer. But let's prove it to be certain. For these types of questions, you can indeed determine RS configuration of each chiral carbon to determine if they're enantiomers, diastereomers, or identical. But I know you don't always have time on tests, especially on DAT or MCAT. So instead, just flip one of the molecules, either one, but only one. I'm flipping the right side molecule. Flip it like a pancake. No rotating, no twisting, or any of that confusing stuff. Flip it into the page or out of the page. It doesn't matter. Now, what does matter, if the molecules are oriented the same, then flip it so that the two molecules face each other, just like you would face yourself in a mirror, and see what it looks like in comparison to the other molecule. This is also important. When you flip a molecule, dashes turn into wedges and wedges into dashes, but sticks stay sticks. So notice the bromine was dashed before flipping and is now wedged after flipping. And while the wedge bromine on the left side molecule is pointing to the right, the wedge bromine on the right side is pointing to the left, so definitely not identical. And since the wedge bromines are facing each other, they're mere images and non-superimposable, enantiomers which is the correct answer without having to do R as configuration. You're probably thinking that was too easy and no trick was needed. No problem, I can make them harder and harder. Here's the next example. This time there's two chiral carbons on each, so diastereomers is possible. They can't be enantiomers because they're already facing each other but are not mere images. Now we're between diastereomers and identical. This is where the trick comes in and really helps. Flip one of the molecules, either one, like a pancake. I tend to always flip the right side molecule. And, importantly, if the molecules start off facing each other, flip it so that they're oriented the same. Notice, once again, after flipping, the dashes became wedges and wedges became dashes. Now they look the same. And to prove it, they're superimposable. 
which means we proved that they're not enantiomers, and now we see they cannot be diastereomers either, because both of those are defined as non-superimposable. So these molecules are actually identical, which is the correct answer. So the trick is, flip it like a pancake, as I've always said to my students, until one said they hate pancakes. But the cool thing is, you could also flip it like a flatbread. Here's another example. Once again, because they each have two stereocenters, diastereomers can't be ruled out. Before we do any pancake flipping, notice that the molecules are oriented the same, with all their chlorines pointing in the same direction. But the wedges and dashes are different, so they're not identical. At face value, it's still a toss-up between enantiomers and diastereomers. So let's flip either one of the molecules, and again, I'm going to flip the right side molecule horizontally so that it's facing the other molecule. And notice, dashes become wedges and wedges become dashes. Now you can see that they're mere images of themselves, making them enantiomers, which is the correct answer. Flip it like a pancake or a flatbread. Let's look at one more example before I bring up the traps to look out for. They each have two chiral carbons, but notice that they're not oriented the same, nor are they facing each other, with one carbonyl pointing up and the other pointing down. But we can flip one of them like a flatbread and get them to be oriented the same or facing each other. I'll start with flipping the right side molecule vertically this time to get them oriented the same. Now the carbonyls are both pointing up and they're oriented the same, and all wedges became dashes and dashes became wedges. Now you can see they don't look exactly the same because one of the wedges is a dash when comparing them, which eliminates identical. And now we're left with enantiomers or diastereomers. So now let's flip either one of the molecules to get them to face each other. I'm just going to flip the right side molecule again, but this time horizontally so that the two are facing each other. And again, all wedges and dashes changed after flipping. And now that they're facing each other, notice that they're not mere images, because the wedges and dashes are opposite on one of the chiral carbons. So we can eliminate enantiomers, making diastereomers the answer, which is correct. So sometimes we have to flip vertically, and sometimes we have to flip vertically and horizontally. Basically flip one like a pancake so it's oriented the same as the other, and compare them. Then if you have to, flip it again so they're facing each other, and compare them again. If you like this trick so far, we have more tricks for organic chemistry, so subscribe and check out our channel, and hit that notification bell so you can catch our latest. Now let's look at a couple more examples so I could bring up the traps to look out for, starting with these two molecules. It's very tempting to compare them as they're oriented the same, or even flip them so they're facing each other, but these are not enantiomers, diastereomers, or identical. Be careful. These at first glance look like they could be one of the three, but while these molecules have the same molecular formula, they don't have the same connectivity. The hydroxyl is mid-chain on the left side molecule, but it's toward the end chain on the right side molecule. And the methoxy is toward the end chain on the left side molecule, but it's mid-chain on the right side molecule. So don't even bother flipping these. They don't even have the same connectivity, which means they're none of the above three options, but rather constitutional isomers also known as structural isomers. So choose that if it's an option in the answer choice set. So look out for molecules that don't have the same connectivity and likewise for molecular formula. Here's another trap. At face value, these molecules look like non-superimposable mirror images and thus enantiomers. But each of these molecules has an internal plane of symmetry, meaning they have identical halves. This makes them meso compounds which means they cannot be enantiomers or diastereomers, because even though they have chiral carbons, due to their internal plane of symmetry, they're overall achiral, which actually makes them identical molecules. But I'm sure you already knew that because when you flip one of them so that they're oriented the same, they would be superimposable, so identical. So look out for molecules that have chiral carbons, but internal symmetry. And one more trap to look out for. Even though these look like mirror images at first glance, be careful, they're not enantiomers or diastereomers because they're achiral. The carbons that look chiral at first glance each have two same substituents, but they do have same molecular formula and same connectivity, so they're identical. 
So look out for molecules that look chiral at first glance, but are actually achiral, especially when they answer a choice that has chirality-related terms like enantiomers and diastereomers. But don't let answer choice sets sway you. Check for chirality before flipping pancakes. Thank you for watching. As a bonus for making it to the end of this video, there's a link in the description below for a free download with a summary for this trick that makes it even faster and easier to answer these types of questions and a few practice problems with answer explanations, plus extra tips for other organic chemistry topics. So check it out. Simple as that.